What's up my Makokos, Raid Bros and Bonk Bros? Defender here and welcome back to another video. Now, we're still counting down the final days to Broshaz's release and today I've got a big one that I've been meaning to cover for a while now because I keep forgetting that this is actually coming to us because it's something I've been thinking about since the launch of the game and we're finally getting the missing piece in our accessories, in our gear, the final, the final piece that we've been waiting for to catch up to the Koreans in terms of gearing. Now I'm not talking about quality of gear, I'm just talking about filling the last slot. Now if you look on your character, you've probably seen this slot for a while now, and it's it hasn't been given us any information, but that's actually where the bracelet's gonna go. And bracelets are the, um, the missing piece of the puzzle, if you will. Uh, they add a lot in terms of their stats and their effects, um, I'll put up a picture now on screen of one that I've found online that uh, is, is used as a good example. And today I want to go through what bracelets are, where we can get them, what they can roll, how to go about uh, looking for a good one, and also how you can make some money because it's a great opportunity to make some gold off the back of it, especially early in the in the launch of the Browshaza content. But before we get into today's video, you guys know the drill with YouTube. If you like the video and you appreciate the content, please consider dropping me a subscribe. Let me know down in the comments down below if there's any ways that I can improve the video or if I've got something wrong maybe, or maybe you just wanna share your opinions on the matter. Um, I always appreciate hearing from you guys. Your feedback's incredible. Uh, I'm taking on board everything you guys are saying and I try and communicate with you guys as much as possible in the comments down below. And so yeah, if you, if you like the content, please consider uh, doing any of those. I'd really appreciate your support. We're going to keep growing as a community and I want to keep delivering amazing content to you guys. But anyway, let's get straight into the video. Enjoy. All right, so what are bracelets? So bracelets are the final piece, like I said, that are missing in our accessories list. They are going to be basically a stat pad for your character. Uh, that's what the, the term is used for in Korea, essentially. And it is a, a very kind of last piece to focus on. It's very expensive to get the perfect one. And also, it's okay to settle on something mid-tier to, to kind of good tier in terms of what it offers. Uh, so, first of all, it offers stats, or at least has the chance to offer stats. Uh, and it also offers some effects as well, like proccing effects or uh, effects that require you to do certain conditions. Or just static effects that are always active for certain classes. And that's why it can be quite difficult to get one because it has so many different layers in the uh, in the pool that can benefit you and some that just don't as well. All right, so let's talk about the requirements for bracelets. Now, bracelets are going to be coming with a, the update next week, and they are fourteen ninety plus for the relic bracelets, and that is why everyone is pushing to be fourteen ninety. Uh, that maybe isn't raiding as well, just because they're inherently going to be available in every bit of content that's fourteen ninety or higher in the future, and it's going to be very very important to get this because it offers some huge benefits. Now. You might think, oh, what is uh, 90 or 100 of a, of a stat benefit to you really? Or what is like an extra uh, little bit of main stat like strength or intelligence? Does it really matter? Well, actually, yes. The, the benefits from a bracelet uh, between Relic and Ancient quality can offer anything uh, from, let's say, 10% to up to 18 to 20% hypothetically. I think, I think they said something like 18% hypothetically is almost perfect in terms of what it can roll 20% maybe the, the 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 pure hypothetical limit in god roll terms with perfect stats and perfect uh, effects so 20% is huge hypothetically right even 5% is huge um you know your light of salvation set giving you 7% holy damage that's essentially a 7% buff and that's a card set that is extremely difficult to get requires you to be very patient and now we can get bracelets and you know, it could be quite easy to get something like 6 to 8 to even maybe 10% on a, a decent budget bracelet. Uh, and that's huge for every class. Uh, supports also have some options available to them to help the team. So we're going to go through those as well. So because we're getting relic ones, a lot of people are wondering if it's worth really investing in a relic one. Uh, when we know we're going to be getting ancient ones down the line that come with the Brashaza hard mode. We haven't had a date for that yet. Um, but essentially... We're going to be looking at ancient ones at some point, so is it worth getting any relic ones now, spending money on relic ones now? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, it's the same as stones, if you will. Is it worth investing in them? Absolutely it is, because you're going to be able to transfer the relic one that you get up into ancient when that eventually happens. Uh, and it also will add in an extra line of stats when you do that. So if you happen to get a really, really good one, or the potential for a good one, 
hold on to it, use it, or maybe just put it in your vault uh, if it's not as good as the one you're using now, but it has higher potential down the line. Keep hold of them because you can transfer them into ancient gear when we finally get that content at 1540 sometime next year. Now, it's also worth stating that you're going to want a bracelet no matter what in 1490 content because if even if it rolls terrible and it doesn't increase your dps it has the potential to increase your health pool increase your um your endurance as well maybe your swiftness so you move quicker you have better cooldowns uh some of the some of the uh, skill effects are actually really really good and some of them are also <clears throat> even if you don't get a desired one you could get some really interesting ones I know that there's a few on the list that I've been reading that sound really fun to play with um, and maybe have some some viab uh, viability in um, in GVG PvP uh, with maybe with the Rowan update as well. I don't I don't know what it might look like in the future, but these things have some some great opportunity to play with, uh, but also a great opportunity to, to give you disappointment if you're spending a lot of money and you don't get the rolls you want. So let's pull up the example I've got here, and it is just a relic one. And as you can see here in the relic example, what we have is four different um, attributes, if you will, on the relic accessory. And four is the norm. Uh, you're going to be get getting them with two with a padlock symbol and two with this kind of uh, spiral uh, kind of blade icon. And we're going to refer to the top line as padlocked or locked and the bottom one as uh, unlocked or unidentified. Now, if you think about some of the games you might have played when you were younger or in the other 2.5D space, you might get something that you don't know what its perks are until it go to an NPC and they uh, open up that item or identify that item for you. Uh, something like Diablo, for example. Uh, Deckard Kane is a big NPC in the Diablo games where you would take items that aren't identified. You'd go to him and he would identify them for you and you'd find out if they were of any value. It's a similar system here with a more RNG, but also with some easier kind of entry levels. Um, so the first two locked, uh, padlocked, locked lines are the first two rolls that you get on the item that are fixed. Okay, so they generate the second that you pick up the item. And in this example, I think we have here uh, some HP and one of the, um, the attribute stats, the combat stats. Now, that's not terrible. Uh, it depends on the item. But the bottom two we're looking at here are effect items, okay, so they're special effect lines, and I can't tell you what these are because I haven't translated them, but essentially they're going to be ones that you can proc, or ones that are permanent depending on what you're doing on your class, maybe you're a back attacker, maybe you're a front attacker, maybe uh, you're a support, these kind of things are permanent, uh, always active in those scenarios. So the first two are locked, you can't change those, and that's where we can look at um, the starting point for all of the the bracelets going forward you want to always look for the first two lock stats that you're going to get and with that you can decide is this item worth keeping is it worth selling um is it worth trashing okay so that's the first immediate point of call all right so before we talk about the types of bracelets that i've classified let's talk about how you roll a bracelet okay because like i said we have these locked or these padlock stats and then we also have these unidentified uh, lines underneath and so you're going to be getting the drop and it's going to come with just these first two lines now it can be some effects it can be some stats there's a whole pool of things it can roll into okay so let's say your item has rolled with strength and crit okay you're going to take this to a vendor and it's going to have two swirlies two of these kind of swirls unidentified symbols underneath it so there's four lines and you can see two and two of them aren't identified. Maybe I can find a screenshot of one that's unidentified for you so you can see. And you're going to take it to a vendor and you're going to use silver to uh, roll identifying what those two lines are. Now you're going to be able to roll four times on a relic uh, bracelet and the first identifying roll is going to count as one of those four rolls. So it's going to identify those two lines and it's going to leave you with three rolls remaining. Now those those two lines could become something immediately that are really, really good. Or they could be something, odds are, they're probably something that you don't want. Because they can be more combat stats, they can be health, they can be main stat, they can be any of the special effect stats, that you, uh, procs that you can get as well. And it's worth noting that you don't get duplicates on stuff you already have. So as I said here, let's say I have strength and crit. I'm not going to get my other two unidentifieds to be strength or crit, okay? Because I already have it ticked here. Can't happen again on another line. And what, what's going to happen is I can then choose if I want to lock any of those uh, identified lines. 
so that when I roll again, I don't lose them. If I don't like them at all, I won't lock them and I'll roll again. And we roll three more times, looking for anything that's desirable along the way and locking it if we get it. If we don't, then after all four rolls, that item is going to be considered a dud, a trash item, and you're going to burn it into dust. Um, and you're going to work again on another bracelet. And it's important to mention, as soon as you start to identify a bracelet, you can't sell it. You can't trade it. It becomes bound. Okay, So you're only ever going to be able to sell bracelets like this in their raw form that haven't been identified in any format. Okay, And so all of the value I'll talk about later comes from those two first stats that it rolls with. So we've talked about rolling them. Okay, We've talked about how you can break them down and re reproduce more. I want to talk about what they can actually roll in terms of their pool of stats because there's actually a very large pool of things they can roll. And what I'll do is I'll pull up this document I have here from St. Tone. Okay, so these are the effects we can start with. In the second brackets, it's going to be the ancient uh, rolls that you can get. But for now, let's just focus on the, the first set of numbers. So like I said, you can roll your health, or you can roll strength, intelligence, whatever your main stat is, okay? And then you can roll any of the other six combat stats. We're just ideally looking for the Holy Trinity, which are crit, spec, and swift, okay? Those are the Holy Trinity. The other ones aren't really used. Maybe in PvP, you might want endurance or, um, I don't know, uh, I don't really PvP much in, in GVG or open world, so I don't know what you might be looking for. But safe to say the value for the other three stats are a lot lower in terms of their sellability and resellability. Okay, and then also you can roll these. So you can roll max health, you could roll max mana, you could roll the defenses, and then there are also looking at some effects that can roll. As you can see here, there are some interesting effects, and these things can roll on the first two locked symbols as well as combat stats and main stats. All right, so we've gone through the ones that can happen in the first two locked or the identified slots. Okay, now let's have a look at the ones that can roll in the other two unidentified slots. So like I said, the, the swirls or the uh, the blades, they're gonna be rolling a different pool of stats. Now, these don't ever appear on a, a drop immediately and they're only ever gonna happen when you start to identify. And there are some ones with some really, really big value in here. And I wanna just quickly highlight the ones that are incredibly, incredibly good. Okay, so the first one is Spike. Now, I don't know if it's gonna have the same name when it's transferred over here, but this one is big because it stacks up damage. Okay, and on top of that, you could also get Hammer. So Hammer works on top of uh, Spike by when you have the Steel Spike active, you get a further benefit from Hammer. Okay, and Cycle is another one that is considered to be absolutely top tier. Um, maybe when all of this comes out, I'll do a tier list for you all the bracelet uh, rolls so you guys can know which ones to focus on and which ones to, to completely scrap or avoid. But Cycle is a really, really good one because it goes through three buffs that are extremely powerful for you. Um, you're going to have damage, you're going to have crit chance, and you're going to have crit um, crit damage. So if you're a class that can make, tr uh, make use of all three of these, you're going to be laughing because it's incredibly, incredibly strong. Now, another one that's really, really good is the Dagger Rock. Okay, so this one is a debuff. Uh, it's a defense down debuff similar to what you might have as a reaper or a destroyer or a gun lancer or um, I believe the summoner also brings defense down. Uh, and this is basically converts into half of that as pure damage. And this is something maybe a support would like, uh, but maybe also a gun lancer or something can bring this to the team if you're not running a support. Okay, so dagger is another really, really good one. You also might like something like enlightenment for a support because it helps increase your gauge. And then you've also got some really, really easy ones to use, which are superiority, assault, and jungle. And these ones increase your damage, increase your crit damage, and increase your crit chance against monsters uh, level 60 or below. And that is, I should say, every monster in the game is currently level 60 or below because that's as high as the game's levels go at the moment. Maybe in the future, they'll become redundant when higher levels are released. Okay. And then you have two really crucial ones here, which I think most people are going to be looking for, are uh, Ambush and uh, Jewel. So they're akin to Ambush Master and uh, Master Master Brawler. So they do uh, back and front attack damage bonuses. If you are either of those, then you're going to be looking for one of these two rolls on your gear as an absolute must because they go highest out of the damage options. Okay, so that's just a translated kind of version of all of the available uh, effects that we know of at the moment. 
and you can kind of make a quick kind of uh, approximate idea of what you might be looking for uh, day one on your characters across the board. I could do a little quick write-up for you if you wanted to, but essentially what we're saying is if you're a DPS class, you want to be looking for two combat stats as a really, really good foundation, like a budget or a settle. Okay, so you want to be looking for these first two padlocks to be combat stats, ideally. You might have one combat stat and one main stat, that's fine as well. But this would give you the most damage if you were to have two of your main stats. So crit and spec would be perfect for my destroyer. Okay, and then after that, the other two unidentified lines for me, hypothetically, would be increasing the head attack damage. That would be a very, very strong one. And then something like spike would be good or cycle would be good. And then at that point, I've pretty much hit the lottery in terms of relic accessories and maybe what you consider to be a, a quote unquote god roll or a very high value uh, settle roll if you so I have four different terms that I would classify these bracelets as I mean maybe you can use these as well if it helps uh, so first of all we have trash uh, which means you don't want it uh, second we have budget which means you don't have to invest in it at all it really comes okay out of the gate you roll decent ish things on there with decent ish stats and then third is settle which means you put some work into it it rolls some decent things that you can use it's much better than the average and then lastly you have a god roll and that's something we're chasing right that's the white whale of bracelets you don't really want to invest too much in it but it is essentially like rolling a nine seven stone or getting a hundred quality uh weapon it's the kind of things that you're investing your money and your time into to to play the, the gacha side of things to get really really good rolls all right, so I'll just go through a few other examples uh, based on my roster then, just so that you guys have an idea uh, for other characters as you play. Uh, so I have, like I said, my destroyer, and I'm looking for something like crit and specialization of the first two stats, and then a couple of the combat effects that are really, really good to proc afterwards, like spike or head attack damage or cycling through the different types of damage. That would be great for the Rage Hammer. Deathblow, similar situation on my striker. I would want crit and specialization. It's even more important on something like that because the Deathblow Striker in its three spender build needs to have a certain threshold of specialization. So I really, really want that extra 100 specialization on a Deathblow Striker more than I would need it on my uh, Destroyer Rage Hammer, for example. There's going to be some classes that really, really need that last bit of a, sp of a combat stat to meet certain thresholds to play their rotations. So Deathblow Striker is one of them. Um, I think Esoteric on War Dancer is another one. You know, there's I, I can't name them all because I don't know all the different classes, but safe to say, a lot of classes need that certain threshold to be met. And then supports, you're going to be looking at something like uh, Specialization and Swift, or maybe one of those and say Endurance or Expertise if you're really on a budget and you can't get hold of something good and the extra lines roll some really good support ones because there's options for, for the gauge generation, there's options for debuffing the boss, there's options for um, extra health and shields. There's plenty of different things that help support um, and it's hard enough for a support to roll a good bracelet because there's so many damage perks in the combat effects pool that dilute your chances of getting a good one for a support. Okay, and so coming away from that, let's talk about what my recommendations are for bracelets from day one, from what I know so far. Bear in mind, I don't know enough in terms of what the Koreans can offer from their expertise, but let's just say from what we've learned today, looking at bracelets, my recommendations would be aim for at least one combat stat, if not two, on the first two rolls. If you get one combat stat and one main stat, that's fine, you can work with that, okay? So either of those two options, out the gate, perfect. And then if you start to roll it and you get some usable co uh, combat effects, then you're good, okay? If by usable, I mean, you know, there are some less desirable DPS ones that still increase your damage, that's fine, okay? You want to look at some kind of potential number between 6 and 12% uh, bonus damage from everything combined. And that's going to be a really, really good sitting point up until we get Ancient. If you get a better one along the way, even better. Okay, but just aim for, I've talked about those four categories of how I'd categorize the bracelets. Aim for tier three, which is settle. Okay, so aim for a settle tier on your bracelet. And what settle I said before means is decent to high quality stats. So 75 here for a stat, 
combat stat is good. Anything 75 to 100, I'm very happy with, okay? If you're chasing it for a certain uh, criteria for a rotation, like striker for death blow, obviously you want 100, but the odds of you getting that without paying, quite small. So just bear that in mind if you're not willing to spend a lot of money, because bracelets are going to be expensive from day one. Okay, and whilst we're talking about bracelets being expensive, let's go on to my final point, which is the gold potential, right? Now, I know in Korea that, um, that bracelets sell much quicker than you can get hold of them, so there's more of a demand than there is of a supply, and I think that's going to be the case early on in the Western side as well. If you happen to get, like I said, any of the bracelets with two of the Holy Trinity rolls on them and that they're high rolls, these are going to be hotcakes. They are going to sell for decent gold. I don't know what the values are going to be like. I can't tell you off the bat what to invest in, uh, in terms of keeping or selling. It's going to be a case of checking the market or getting on there early and trying to sell what you've got for a price you think will sell. It's going to be a lot of undercutting, a lot of buying and then reselling at higher prices. So if you happen to get something like crit and specialization, which I think is going to be the biggest selling item, then make sure that you are not undervaluing it, uh, but also that you aren't just throwing it up and leaving it up there when it could be selling uh, much, much lower, but quicker if you need that money. So crit and specialization, I think are going to be the two that sell for the highest. If you get high rolls in both of these combined, then you are well in a way at selling a piece for I would say probably six figures. Now, if it doesn't sell for six figures, then it's just a case of playing the market. Each region's gonna be different as well. But that's why I would suggest you have as many 1490 characters as possible. Make sure you get the rested bonus. Check out my previous video on how to prepare for this next week because we're coming down to the last few days now and it's really, really important that you get on top of it before it's too late. Rested bonus is gonna double your, your chances of getting these bracelets to drop. Uh, which essentially doubles your chances of getting more money. So if you haven't done that already, start making sure you get your rest bonus. Check out my previous video on how you can prepare for Brashaza launch next week. I'll put a link in the description and a link up on screen now. These things are really important, okay? A lot of options for gold, but the longer we go into the update, the less value these items are going to have unless you get something that is perfect, okay? So you have the potential to sell some decent budget value bracelets early on if you get them so keep an eye on some items discuss with your friends refer back to the videos look for two combat stats that is going to be your biggest value for both you and for the market okay because that is going to start you with the best basis to roll into better rng uh, but unfortunately it's going to be a lot of rolling into bad rng until you get a good one 99% uh, of you are going to have to go through quite a few bracelets to get a good one, which is why I think selling a lot of the good ones first is more important than rolling through them until you get a good one, because it's something I consider to be near the end of the, the game in terms of priority of your gold investment, okay? Uh, similar to chasing a 9-7 stone when you've got a 7-7 stone, you know, it's it's a small, small bonus that isn't worth the gold investment compared to a lot of other things in the game so honing uh stones of chaos into quality uh buying accessories uh buying fions to then buy accessories um even buying stones in rolling stones all these things in my opinion offer better value uh, maybe even buying card packs for the rng is better value than buying these bracelets and rolling into two tiers of rng on top of the fixed rolls okay so just bear that in mind before you go and start spending all your gold on these bracelets. We have plenty of time before the ancient one to chase a good one. That being said, that is everything I want to talk about today. I hope you guys learned some information today. You take away with you uh, some knowledge on bracelets and you get yourself prepared for the launch. Um, because it's going to be a good opportunity to make yourself stronger. Make all of your, your roster stronger. Make a bit of gold as well. And for all of us to, to start growing into better rotations, stronger players, progressing. And remember guys, if you're new to the channel please consider dropping a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. It helps me push the content out to more people. And thank you also always appreciate it, wouldn't you, Bubba? You say thank you, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, you're so shy. You're such a shy baby. You say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. See you in the next one. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs>